This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. With me is John Cameron and Richard Fields, as usual. Gentlemen, more political hypocrisy is in the news. Governor Newsom was... Governor Newsom. Yeah, Governor I'm, Newsom. Yeah, <laughs> Governor Newsom. That was a good one. Governor Newsom was caught at a laundry party, which I guess is essentially just a birthday party with 12 other families. And then he came out and apologized, saying he shouldn't have done it. Crashed after spending months lecturing us to stay at home and not gather with our families, mm -hmm. tell us not to go to Thanksgiving. And to kind of top it all off, we've got this uh, tweet from Justin Amash, just to kind of round out this whole thing, is where the leaders <laughs> in Washington are having a nice big party for the newly elected members. And, but of course, Nancy Pelosi says it's a, it's very well spaced and the white house and the house physician signed off. So of course it's okay. You know, mm -hmm. they can gather for parties and for Thanksgiving, but we, the, you know, the proletariat, we have to just mm -hmm. sit down and shut up and take our medicine. Mm -hmm. This thing I think, kind of I think uh, with an animal farm where where they, where the uh, the pigs said some animals are more equal than others, I think the yeah. pigs are saying they're more equal than we are. Yeah. Well, I think I think choosing to call them pigs is completely appropriate. Yeah. Except for pigs are smart and left to their own devices, clean. So can't we pick a pick a really filthy animal that that rather than pigs? I, I think anyway. crocodile might, might work. Crocodile or alligator. No, I or think creature in any case. I think we just call them politicians. Call them exactly what they are. They're, Ooh. you know, you know what, you know, you know the Latin deriv der derivation of polit uh, politics, right? Yes, it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's uh, ticks for uh, uh, invading uh, insects that are pesky and, and poly for many. Mm. Many ticks. And invading insects, yeah. poly ticks. Yeah. 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 Well, that's anyway. it's, it's not Latin, but it's funny. Yeah. 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 It's, well, it's, 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 uh, it's pig Latin. Pig, it's, uh, 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 well, it's just That's a new slapper. I don't know if you guys, I'm just getting tired of this blatant hypocrisy from all the political sides. It doesn't go Yeah, you know, I was I was planning on, on taking a, a road trip to, I have a farm up in Oregon. I was taking, planning on taking a road trip to Oregon uh, this week, uh, leaving on uh, Monday, coming back a week uh, a week later. And, uh, you know, had the Airbnb rented, had the, uh, you know, had all the plans made, uh, family was going to join me. And then they come down with this new order, not an order, it's uh, an advisory. An advisory. Uh, do what we think you should do. We're not going to put you in jail if you don't do it, but we strongly recommend that you quarantine for two weeks after you return from traveling out of state, yada, yada, yada. And Oregon's doing exactly the same thing. So my renter in Oregon, would have the same uh, conundrum that I would have. So I had to cancel the trip and forfeit, I think, half the uh, uh, Airbnb uh, rental uh, payment. It's, it's you know, we have to put up with all this nonsense while uh, while the, the politicians party on as usual and take more space to party, which uh, also comes at taxpayer expense, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they, they increase the airflow. The, yeah, well, uh, they just talk more. Is that what you're saying? Well, I I think wind. It's wind. Yeah, wind. They're windy. No, but the, the hypocrisy is 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 crazy, and and what makes it even worse is that that there's no science behind any of this stuff. It's like for for the trillions of dollars that have been spent. You now we're we're going to talk about some other non-science based stuff a little bit later, but the. Um, the capricious uh, and arbitrary na nature of the rules. Um, you know, who, who's decided that a restaurant is, is, you're more likely to get ill in a restaurant than you are in, in uh, a nail salon, you know, apparently. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, who knows? Nobody knows. Or, uh, yeah. we, we have, a, we have a, an infectious disease. People are going to catch it. The only way it will ever go away is when enough people catch it and survive it so that uh, the virus has no place left to go. Just like every other uh, coronavirus we've ever experienced from the swine flu to the Hong Kong flu to ordinary flu to the common cold. It'll be here until there's no place else for it to go and then it'll mutate into something else and come back again. That's just the way... Yeah. Uh, life and death goes on. Uh, yeah. The amount of masks that are being worn, the amount of social distancing that's being done, 
will have effect at the margins as to how fast this uh, virus can spread, but it will not prevent it. Uh, the uh, best example is, well, one example, of course, is Sweden, and another one is Taiwan. Taiwan has less than five, less than, I think, five or 600 cases total. They've got about a 1%, a little over 1% death rate, just like everywhere else where the measurements are being done, honestly. It's about a 1% killer, and most of those 80% of the 1% that are killed are, you know, people that are, that are going to die in six months anyway because they've got a comorbidity. Uh, and, and Taiwan had no lockdown, none. Uh, they had one, uh, they had some, some restrictions on the number of people that came in from Wuhan early on uh, and some, you know, some border checks as far, as far as, uh, but that's, that's the extent of the lockdown, no internal lockdown whatsoever. Uh, they wear masks as kind of a, a protection against air pollution, just as a matter of course. So masks may or may not have an effect. Social distancing probably has some effect. But again, at the margins. And the lockdowns have not. The lockdowns are simply a way to kill the economy while you're killing the people's health at the same time, or supposedly mm -hmm. saving people's, people's health, at least well, uh, I'd, postponing I'd like the, the inevitable. Yeah. And I'd like to add something to what Richard said, because um, everything else is theoretical, and there should be um, enough data out there. Um, I, I forget which one of you guys sent me uh, sent me something about a study that was done very soon in this um, panic demic, as I like to call it. I think it was done in March. Forty five hundred people or sixty five hundred people, some were in mass, some didn't. And, and the study lasts about six weeks. It's done. And that smallest study, you could massage the data and, and post to a peer-reviewed um, panel in a couple of weeks. And one of the people that did the study was asked, uh, asked uh, why uh, the results weren't published. And they said, well, well we can't find uh, any place brave enough to publish it. So, yeah, and, and um, that's exactly the case. It was a, a study out of Denmark. It was a, yeah. a you know, a, a peer-reviewed, totally legit study, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't conform with science because mm. science is already, <laughs> according to the you know the people that so-called manage public opinion, science is what we say it is, not what it actually is. And, uh, the, well, the term well, science well. has been corrupted. For, you know, it's, it's, the corruption started with the climate change so-called uh, environmental science, and now it's gone into uh, medical science. And, uh, mm -hmm. and anybody that wants to shut down the opposition just starts yelling science, and mm -hmm. that's supposed to shut the conversation down, and unfortunately, it quite often does. Mm -hmm. well, I think science, shouting science, I'm sorry, uh, James, go ahead. Well, it's just hard to take these politicians seriously when they don't follow their own rules. Mm -hmm. When then they're just so blatant about it. And then, oh, well, we apologize. I should have been more cautious. Well, no, you deliberately didn't follow your own rules. Yeah. And you're sitting here telling us, literally putting people's lives, putting people's businesses out of, out of work, putting people's lives, <laughs> destroying people's livelihoods, completely uprooting our culture. But hey, we don't have to follow the rules. And it's pretty well, hard. Newsom is sorry. He's, he's not sorry that he went to the party. He's sorry he got caught. Sorry he yeah. got caught, yeah. yeah and just, then... Just like all of them, it's this. It's out. It's outrageous. It really is outrageous. The level of hypocrisy on not just COVID, on kind of everything, yeah. on all these politicians. They all say what complaining about the other guy exactly what they're doing. And yeah, you know the Republicans now that they have control of uh, the Senate but not the presidency, they're now uh, becoming born again fiscal conservatives. It's yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. as well, and as well, they well, they should be, and you know, I mean, if, but they were for the last four yeah. years. That's the no, hypocrisy. No. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I want to talk about some science, and I'm not a big fan of who, not the the rock group. I love the rock group, but the World World Health Organization, um, and uh, they've come out. Uh, tw well, the World Bank, which I also despise, and the World Health Organization, which runs close second to them. Uh, World Bank said that. Uh, um, you know how we're we're dealing with the panic demic, or they call it a pandemic, has pushed uh, 150 million people into the worst form of poverty, and that's science. That's you can observe people starving to death and watching, you know, any income that they had, the buck ninety eight a day or below, which defines the worst form of poverty, happen, and uh, millions of those are going to die way more than will ever die from from the, the uh, coronavirus. And then World Health Organization flat came flat out said that lockdowns are not, they're a temporary um, solution 
uh, at best, not a long-term solution. And, uh, you know, Fauci, who is third on my list of people I don't like, probably, I read a long list of people I don't like, and he's on it as well, said that uh, we don't need lockdowns. You know, you just maintain social distancing and a little bit of uh, common sense and wear masks and, and you'll be fine. But we're doing it. So, um, and it's it's the capricious and arbitrary nature of it really has me um, worried because uh, we're basically being ruled by uh, uh, dictators who are assuming power that they don't legally have and issuing dictates that aren't based on anything but the 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 the, the latest whispering in their ear from people in their power structure. But the consequences are real. The debt that our great great grandchildren yeah, and it's being and it's being sold with a Nazi a Nazi uh, tactic, which is the big lie. Repeat something yeah. often enough, and eventually everybody will believe it. The big lie is that uh, you know the, this pandemic is going to kill everybody. That's the big lie. It's going to kill ninety nine percent of the people who get it. Not everybody's going to get it. So it's yeah. it's worse than the flu, but not that much worse. Well, and then you know that there's there's genetics involved. What what annoys me. Uh, or what scares me is um, the thought control here, because there should be enough data out there. I mean, Kaiser alone, Dignity Health alone, uh, probably even Sutter, probably has enough case experience. Um, um, and the National Health Service in, in England certainly does. They have enough case experience to run the numbers and run good statistical analysis and tell you exactly who's at risk. They can do it by blood type. Well, they, they, yeah, yeah, it's been done, and the people that are at risk are old people like you and me. Yeah, well, I'm older, older, and it's not just there. It's not. I don't think age in and in and of itself, although it's being called a comor comorbidity, is actually a comorbidity because, you know, typically when people reach a certain age, they have a number of comorbidities. But there's uh, again some outliers. Healthy people who are aged. Or, or say, not sailing through this. Many of them are sailing through it. They'll get it as if it's the flu and they'll live through it. If they're diabetic, if they're obese, if they carry the sickle cell trait, um, you know, if they have uh, atherosclerosis, uh, there's a number of comorbidities. And, and apparently the biggest one is, is obesity, which is, I'm, I'm shocked that, that the numbers aren't much higher in the US. And, and you know, diabetes is, I think, second. So we protect those people and kids who don't get sick, or if they get sick, they don't die. Let and young people let them live their lives. Protect us old people. Give us some some N95s to wear, uh, and and let us make an informed choice about what we want to do. So rather than uh, what is, I what I love to talk about when I talk about government is one size fits none, and that's the oh, last okay. thing I can I can say, and we can move on. No, then we've got a great thing to move on to you with. I just want to say, unless before we drop this corner, coronavirus, um, uh, the lar second largest county in Wisconsin has reported a 100% increase in suicides. And so there are other human costs other than just corona deaths that this um, response to coronavirus has caused. And I think we need to be more aware of that. Mm -hmm. But as we move on, Joe Biden has a plan for a national supply commander there, John. This one is going to make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> You've got talking about yeah, the very guy. You're the you ex paratrooper. You, you should be happy to hear that we have a president that is going to have a supply commander. Commander. Well, Commandant. I, I see. The only problem with that is, is uh, you know, and I love reading reason articles. I don't know who sent me that to to look at, but you know, we have, uh, and Richard can talk about the politics uh, and the the supply and demand associated with medicine in this country better than I can. Well, we've, we've thrown out these numbers over and over again. The reason medicine is so expensive in this country is that we're, it's basically prepaid health care. There is no competition. Uh, people are regulated uh, to go to one vendor that belongs to one union. Uh, you can't have any competition in it. There is no price competition. And we're, uh, you take that already broken system and add the worst possible uh, leadership, and I hate to even use that word, but management to it, which is government management, and it's going to make it even worse. It's not going to make it better. I mean, if you want to make the uh, a market more efficient, you remove the, the controls on the market and let market forces provide 
the costs and, and direct goods to where they're, where they're valued most, because every time this has ever been, been done in history, it works out. And then you look at, at the opposite thing, which is, uh, oh, let's just use one example, the collectivization of farms in the Ukraine in the 30s, seven or eight million Ukrainians starved to death. So I wouldn't be surprised at all. In the breadbasket of Europe. In the breadbasket of, of uh, Central Asia or Eastern Europe. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if, if they do, if they are stupid enough to put in a supply chain commander if that uh, mortality rate doesn't move from 1% to 10%. I, would well, be, I want some scientific would evidence shocked. that the government can actually do this job. Well, this science, science, evidence. Where's the evidence? Where's the historical evidence that they actually have the competence to do this job? There, there's, there, there is no example <laughs> in, it's my, one of my favorite examples is what's, what's an elephant? It's a, a mouse built to government specs. So, you know, we're, we're, <laughs> we're going to get killed on this, man. You know, we really are. Well, I mean, literally, we might literally get killed by this. I well, mean, it's this it's notion like, that we, yeah, 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 John, it's this notion. We've got this notion that we need this centralized control. In order to manage this thing, we have to have these smaller and smaller groups of people managing these complex problems. It's essentially an oligarchy. If, if, if you want to really get down to it, you've got this group of people who want an oligarchy. They want to be ruled by a small group of people so-called experts who look at the science, but of course it's only a narrow version of science. It's not really a holistic version of science and then make decisions based upon what they think the world should look like in 10, 20, 30 years, not what kind of average people decide the world will look like in 10, 20, 30 years by their own actions. It's, it's kind of absurd if you kind of think about it too much, but. No, it's, it's absurd if you think about it at all, <laughs> not too much. It's absurd if you think about it at all. And, and he, we, we go back to kind of a central theme on this. There's um, the, the, the green thing and global warming or climate change or whatever they're calling it now, the, the breath of Zeus. I don't know what the hell the newest term for it is, is something that can't be scientifically proven that is used to completely take control. And then we have this panic which is used by the oligarchy or the nomenclature or whatever you want to call them to take control. And the, the, the goal, the stated goal is, you know, we need to save the planet or the stated goal is we need to save the populace. But the real goal is to acquire and maintain power. And once a government organization gets power, it never gives it up unless it's forced to. I mean, history has shown that there are no examples of government saying, Okay, we've solved that problem. Here's your freedom back. Uh, it just doesn't happen. So you know we're 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 triply screwed here. But the supply commander that really, and if it is if if this position does happen, and if it gets past Congress, or would it have to be? Can can the, can uh, President Harris do it? Can she do it just by by uh, fiat? Can she just create this? Or should they'll, they'll, try. Try. They'll, they'll try. They'll, they'll try. Yeah. They do everything else by fiat these days. So yeah. I, you know, and fiat's a bad car. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Anyway, um, break down all so, the time. Imagine yeah, that. I think I think we probably beat this one to death. But it'll be it'll be ludicrous, and I can guarantee you it won't be someone who has experience in the private sector in creating efficiencies. It will be someone from with a, a history, a deep history of government, whatever incompetence that will have a track record of creating inefficiencies. I will guarantee that. Yeah. They won't hire the guy who used to, who runs a uh, FedEx. That's no, for sure. It won't be, no. won't be somebody from Walmart. I'll guarantee that. Yeah. <laughs> no. You want to talk about supply chain? Those are the people you need to hire. Amazon, Bezos, maybe put, put him in charge. I well, think he's a big guy at the post office right now. Or the, or the driver. Or the... <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. yeah, we beat this. We'll talk about beating the dead horse. We'll kind of move on. Um, Dutch Bank has uh, has issued a uh, what a statement saying that remote workers should pay a privilege of using their homes as an office, and they want to tax them for the privilege of working out of your house. Because yeah, well, now Deutsche Bank is a, it's a private bank. I don't know what a private bank is doing, uh, advocating Deutsche. for higher taxes. Uh, maybe that's the way they do it in Germany. I don't really know. But the whole idea that you have to pay a tax for working from home, that's uh, about as lame an excuse as I can think of for 
uh, increasing taxes. Of course, governments always want to increase uh, taxes. Deutsche Bank may want to uh, uh, decrease the amount of uh, money that it pays its employees by forcing them to come to the office. I don't, I'm not sure what, what, what's going on there as far as their motivation. But the idea of taxing people differentially upon where they, based on where they work is, I hope, a non-starter, but who knows? Well, and I think, you know, it, it, uh, here in the States, and I don't remember the tax law, when I was self-employed, well, when I had officially had my own business, um, I worked from home. So, you know, part of my internet uh, was a business expense, part of my, my cell phone, um, computers, supplies, mailing expenses, all the rest of that stuff. I was buying health insurance and on and on and on. I could declare that as an expense and actually reduce my taxes. And I don't, I don't think that applies to people who are being forced to work from home. You know, people are, some people are choosing to work from home, but for, for most of those people, um, their expenses have actually, other than commuting expensive, have, have in many cases gone up because, you know, they're, they're having to pay for, for schooling. They've needed a ro more robust <laughs> system at home. They've had to acquire office furniture or create an ergonomic environment. They've, if they were on their own, their apartment was cooled or unheated or uncooled during the day. Now they have to keep it livable. Um, so on and on and on. So their expenses in many cases have gone up. Some have gone down, but that's beside the point. Um, the, the, I think one of the articles I looked at said that, that uh, you know, what has happened is that, that all the infrastructure, and they want to use this for infrastructure, supposedly take this for this and then pay the lower echelon people who are forced to still work, service people, if they have any jobs left, uh, a stipend out of the money they're taxing from people who are lucky enough to have a job. And working from home, I have a much yeah, and it's always solution. the infrastructure. It's always the infrastructure we're trying. It's always you know to 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 fund the roads. It's not mm -hmm. about roads. Roads are less than you know two or three percent of the federal budget, and mm -hmm. uh, even the state budget, not a big a big chunk of it. Mm -hmm. It's the money is going to fund all of the uh, vote purchasing programs, and I'm talking about Social Security, Medicare care and the military industrial complex that's what the money is being spent on those three items are well over uh 70 80 percent of the federal budget yeah if if all the politicians actually spent the money they said they were spending on roads education police fire we'd have the world's greatest police fire and roads <laughs> ever but that's not well, where especially the money goes. In, especially in california and yeah, uh, we all know that's not where the money goes they just want the money for their grifters and all the various ways they pay off the the people who invest in candidates. And it's no different in Germany than it is here. You know, yeah. large donors are, it's an investment. When you invest, you know, $600,000 in a political candidate, that's an investment. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not a donation. That's an investment. A couple hundred bucks is a donation. A thousand bucks is, a, is an investment. And that's, that's the lesson I learned running for office is, you know, big money donors, those, that money is not for nothing. And so <laughs> that money is not for nothing. And so all this, talk about tax money, they want to spend it to give back to all the people who get them into office. And Dutch Bank, my guess is they're carrying water for the politicians who they who they put into office. It's mm. as simple as that. Talk about back to politicians. Oh, San Francisco is considering $1,000 fines for people smoking tobacco or cannabis in their apartments. We know who cool. <laughs> I think that I think they should do that. I, I think what, what they really want to do is cut cut all of that crap out. Oh no, Richard disappeared. Um, and um, where'd Richard go? Yeah, he dropped off. We'll put him back well, in. Then we'll, we'll, we'll then we'll have to we'll have to take care of care of this. Um, um, yeah, we're gonna have to we'll have to manage on our own. At this the end of this, John. I don't think we can because Richard usually does all the well. I guess I'm. Uh, I do most of the talking sometimes, but the uh, what they need to do is cut to the chase. And instead of just fining people for a smoking pot or smoking in their homes, fine them for thinking for themselves. And then, um, you know, anybody who toes the line and sits in a vegetative state watching propaganda come out of the boob box all day receives mm -hmm. no fines. But anybody who, who voices an opinion other than towing the line of the nomenclature or the state, just fine them. But the, the problem about, you know, we, got, we get back, we talked about science. Uh, and um, there is no scientific evidence from any good study 
that shows that secondhand smoke is a danger to anybody. Uh, they uh, said that, that uh, when uh, people quit smoking in common areas outdoor, that the number of you know, cancer and heart attacks and strokes will plummet. And they said it did, but no study has proven that. Um, you know, the idea that, that this smoke somehow mysteriously seeps through walls and attacks infants in their cribs and dooms them to a life of, of uh, um, Richard screen froze. I don't know, man. Yeah, maybe, maybe the, the uh, big brother reached out and finally froze them out completely, not just out of Twitter and Facebook and all the rest of that. Yeah, well, so, well, you know, it's, it's bad, it's bad science, um, you know, and just an excuse for, I listen to the, I listen to the radio and, and what's disgusting to me is many of the commercials I hear are from these government agencies spending my tax dollars to give me a message to do something that makes no scientific or medical sense. And it's just pissing me off. That's not what I pay those people to do. I pay them to, you know, keep me from being robbed. Uh, I shouldn't even have to pay them to, I'm going off. I shouldn't even have to pay them for taxes for the streets. But uh, private roads work perfectly well for thousands of years. Toll roads work perfectly here and now. Put the little box in the car. You use the road. You pay for it. You don't use the road. You don't, you don't pay for it. Done. We don't need all these crazy levels of government control. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, I don't necessarily mind the roads, but I, I do mind this back to hypocrisy again. In San Francisco, you can literally poop on the street, and it's perfectly fine. But you light up a joint in your in, in, in your, your own apartment, in your own apartment, and you're facing a thousand dollar fine. It's yeah. just where do these people come up with these things? Well, you know, I got I got to take a dump. I think I'll drive to San Francisco and crap on the street. I mean, that, might, that might be a good thing to do. In Oregon, what do they do? In Oregon, they've legalized cocaine, but they've made straws illegal. You know, it's just it's. Well, how are you going to snort cocaine without straws? I don't, I, don't you know, I don't know about that stuff, John. But, you know, I'm just saying you've got a bunch of people laughing at this going because it's, it makes no sense. No, so, I mean, I, I absolutely agree. None of it makes sense. And and uh, that's why, you know, the whole Kafka, as Kafka Ornia, especially, I think uh, California um, is just ludicrous. I mean, people in the rest of the country laugh at it. And they talk about popular vote and presidency. And one little fact is if it wasn't for all the Looney Tunes people in in California and New York voting that way, every single Republican candidate who's ever run for major office for president in this country would have actually won. So you really have two states that are electing, um, basically, that are Doing this popular vote thing, so and you we're know out it's of just, time, John. It's crazy. All right, well, yeah, good. And we're and we're crazy, and we're out of time. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, you can visit us at libertariancounterpoint.com. You can catch us at Anchor FM and all of various podcast networks. And uh, thank you for thank you for your time. And please remember to love everybody. I, I think I shall. I've been focusing on that more. I do a little. This is Gail Morgan. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at eight p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint.